Salamat berjumpa lagi. Welcome to ASEAN Today. I'm Dalton Tanaraka of the Indonesia Channel at the ASEAN Secretariat in Jakarta. Salam sejahtera. I'm Raymond Go of Malaysia's TV Tiga in Kuala Lumpur. And this is your monthly look at the dynamic Southeast Asia region. We begin this month with a story that gripped attention around the world, the Malaysia Airlines jet that disappeared on March 8th. Search teams failed to find any trace of possible debris of Flight 370 in the Indian Ocean off Australia on March 21st. That's after satellite images showed two large objects the day before. The plane left here in Kuala Lumpur with 239 passengers and crew heading to Beijing. It disappeared from radar not long after takeoff, with indications that it may have been forced to alter course. Theories on what happened ranged from terrorism to hijacking. More than 100 ships and planes from 26 countries searched for the plane in a massive area stretching from Kazakhstan to the Indian Ocean. Then on March 24th, Malaysia's Prime Minister made a somber announcement that new satellite data showed Flight 370 crashed into the Indian Ocean. With deep sadness and regret, that I must inform you that according to this new data, light MH370 ended in the southern Indian Ocean. But the question remained among grieving relatives, why? Campaigning for parliamentary elections here in Indonesia officially kicked off on March 16th. Fifteen parties are competing for seats in voting that will take place on April 9th. The results will determine which party can nominate its own presidential candidate for voting in July. Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono cannot run again because of term limits. He's led for the past 10 years with an average of near 6% economic growth. The country's main opposition party made a major move two days before by announcing that Jakarta Governor Joko Widodo would be its presidential nominee. The Indonesian Democratic Party of Struggle has been led by former President Megawati Sukarno Putri, who considered running again before giving her blessing to the man popularly called Joko Wi. Politics in Cambodia may be seeing a royal alliance. Prince Norodom Ranarid announced on March 16th a return to public service, saying his comeback is aimed at uniting the royalist movement, but he denied speculation that he will have ties with Prime Minister Hun Sen. Analysts believe an alliance would draw on the popularity of the royal family, take support away from the opposition Cambodia National Rescue Party. The service department brand Ascot is moving into Myanmar and other parts of Asia. The Singapore company said on March 13th that its first property in Myanmar would go up 15 minutes from downtown Yangon and 30 minutes from the airport. It also announced expansion plans in China with all projects opening by 2018. Ascot now has serviced residences across 83 cities in 23 countries, including here in Indonesia. Coffee growing is being encouraged in Thailand, with the government urging farmers to earn more money for their beans. Coffee planting is being done on the hillsides of northern Thailand, where illegal opium poppies were once the main crop. The government says coffee growing enables farmers to earn nearly $3,200 an acre, much higher than crops such as cabbage and ginger. Coffee production in Thailand is increasing by 10% a year. More than 67,000 tonnes were sent to processing plants last year. Thailand protects its coffee industry with a nearly 100% import tariff on foreign beans. Women in a small town in the Philippines are keeping a 500-year-old tradition alive. ASEAN Today's Andita Winda reports on how the business of hand embroidery is surviving. Monica de Ramos is one of 1,500 hand embroiderers who carry on a textile tradition. Despite her advanced age, Ramos still manages to do the calado, a difficult type of embroidery. Nearly 60% of this town's 30,000 people are involved in the industry. Pinipilit kung makatapos para makarami, para pag pagdadala sa Maynila, marami-rami kami dalang deliver, de maraming pera, at pang ano sa mga anak, mga nag-aaral. 
Hand embroidery items can be completed in just a few days or take several months depending on the size of the fabric and the intricacy of the design. Workers are paid from 25 to 50 pesos an hour or 62 cents to a dollar 25, depending on their speed and experience. The government encourages the wearing of the local product as part of the town's cultural heritage. Ang mga nagturo ng pagbuburda sa aming mga ninuno ay ang mga madrim Franciscano ng araw ng kalabing anim na siglo. Ang binuburdahan nila noon ay belo na ipinapadala sa Europa. So sa belo nagumpisa yan. So malikhain ng mga Tagalumban mula sa belo, barong Tagalog na kung ano-ano na ano. Lumban is well known for this cottage industry. But business is being challenged by cheaper mass-produced goods and a lack of interest from the younger generation to carry on the tradition. Noon 20 years ago, ganda ng maganda ang quality pa ng baro. Sa ngayon, kasi nahahaluan na kami ng burdang bulakan, panimasin. Siyempre, ang tao gusto murang baro. Kaya ay nakikita nyo sa mga mall, dati yun, ang gaganda ng mga baro. Ngayon, nahahaluan lang ng mga masin embroidery. Kaya nalulungkot din ako. This hand embroidery tradition is worth a half million dollars in revenue to this town southeast of Manila. To workers like Ramos, it keeps her aging hands busy while preserving a cultural practice. Andita Winda for ASEAN Today. More ASEAN Today is coming up shortly. We will visit with one of Indonesia's most celebrated designers. The fashions of Anne Avanti draw on the old and the new. Her inspiration next. You're watching ASEAN Today. I'm Raymond Goh in Kuala Lumpur. And I'm Dalton Tanonaka in Jakarta. She's one of Indonesia's most colorful designers. Anne Avanti pioneered turning the traditional kabaya into a contemporary fashion hit. ASEAN Today's Ni Wayan Suryatini talked with Avanti in her Jakarta boutique, beginning with the beginning. Awalnya uh, saya mengawali dengan membuat kostum tari, menyewa-nyewakan dan tidak pernah terpikir bahwa akhirnya Tuhan mengantarkan saya menjadi seorang fashion designer. Awalnya dari seorang ibu, jadi ibu saya dulu menjahit, punya salon kecil-kecilan dan kemudian uh, saya adalah mata rantai dari perjalanan kehidupan di mana dari ibu kemudian melahirkan saya dan melahirkan putri saya Intan Avanti adalah tiga generasi dalam industri fashion di Indonesia. Gitu. What is your creative inspiration? Dan saya berinovasi. Awalnya tentu dari pikiran yang jernih, hati yang bening, dan kemudian melihat bahwa semua 100% dari isi dunia, alam dan semesta ini adalah inspirasi. Jadi kita tidak perlu berangkat kemana-mana, tidak perlu mencari situasi. Situasi itu ada di dalam diri kita sendiri. Di dalam Perjalanan kehidupan kita sendiri itu sudah berisi inspirasi. Kita tinggal ngorek. Kita mau bagaimana dan mau menuangkannya seperti apa. Kemudian Tuhan memberikan kita anugerah cara. What influences can we see in your design? Si mungkin orang melihat karya Ana Avanti adalah uh, bagaimana uh, kita melihat sebuah inspirasi itu tertuang dalam bentuk karya nyata, dalam warna, dalam siluet dan dalam keberanian untuk berekspresi. But what's your signature that makes you different from other designers? Warna dan leher. Bentuk ukir-ukir leher, warna, siluet. Who's your target customer? Target customer saya adalah orang yang bangga dengan brand Ana Avanti. Siapapun asal dia bangga terhadap karya Ana Avanti itu brand saya gitu. Are your clothes for overseas customers as well? Yeah. Iya. Jadi uh, uh, Michelle Obama juga saya yang buat juga. 
kemudian pernah saya juga buat beberapa permaisuri di Malaysia dan uh, tentu uh, banyak orang termasuk um, ya kalau saya bilang bahwa karya saya dinikmati dan dicintai itu fleksibel sekali ya What's your annual sales total and how many pieces do you sell a month? Sulit untuk saya jawab karena setiap baju itu berproses dan setiap prosesnya itu merupakan proses yang benar-benar uh, proses itu proses yang kalau boleh saya bercerita yang tidak bisa saya kalkulasi ada 6 bulan proses 7 bulan proses misalnya untuk yang fitting hari ini itu akan dipakai kebanyakan hari ini untuk bulan Juni, Juli dan Agustus yang mereka pesan sudah dari sejak bulan Desember maka buat saya menjadi sulit gitu yang utama adalah bagaimana ketika karya anak Avanti ini masih dicari dan masih menjadi yang utama di Indonesia What is Indonesia in term of global fashion industry? Nah ini sesuatu saya tidak bisa mengatakan di posisi mana tapi posisi yang dilirik itu adalah posisi di mana mencuri perhatian publik dan dunia sudah melihat itu Avanti is planning to hold a fashion event marking her 25 years in the business in September More ASEAN Today is coming up shortly. We will head to Cambodia to watch a martial arts tradition and then a trip down the Chao Phraya River for a different view of Thailand's capital. This is ASEAN Today. And we are coming to you this month from Jakarta and Kuala Lumpur. Mixed martial arts is enjoying a revival in Cambodia thanks to efforts by masters of a traditional technique. ASEAN Today's Andrew Trigg reports. This is Yutakun Kom, Cambodia's indigenous form of martial art. It mixes elbow and knee strikes, shin kicks, submission and ground fighting, as well as the use of weapons like bamboo sticks and swords. It dates back 1,000 years and is considered the root of modern Muay Thai and kickboxing. Chan Rothana is a legend among Yutakon Kom fighters. The 27-year-old athlete has fought more than 80 times in the ring and has never been knocked down. He learned his skills in his father's gym on the outskirts of the capital Phnom Penh, one of the few places still teaching the sport. Chan Buteon is one of only two Yotakun Kom masters left in Cambodia. <laughs> Over the past 10 years, a handful of clubs and organizations have tried to preserve the deadly battlefield technique by adapting it into a sport. Rotana opened the Salapak Living Arts School last year on this busy street in Phnom Penh. Uh, for $60 a month, students here get a rigorous workout, along with insight into an ancient warrior culture. Um, yeah, no, I love it. I, um, I started, I've just moved to Phnom Penh and I started training here because I wanted a sport that was going to be challenging physically. Um, and the fact that it's something that's very Cambodian, very Khmer, is great. Bonus, I suppose, it's a way to learn about the culture. Mi piace molto perché è un misto 
tra attività fisica ma anche insegnamento della cultura cambogiana e lo raccomanderei a tutti gli italiani che sono a Phnom Penh e se in un futuro arriverà in Italia anche agli italiani in Italia. Foreigners were originally not allowed to learn this martial art, but modern day practitioners like Rothana believe opening the doors may be the only way to keep the tradition strong. Andrew Trigg for ASEAN Today. Here are several events on the ASEAN calendar. Shop in Singapore at Fashion Steps Out at Orchard 2014 from April 4th to May 18th on Orchard Road, of course. The Paint Party Life in Color 2014 will be held on April 19th at the Sepang International Circuit in Kuala Lumpur. And the 20th Phuket Bike Week takes place on Patong Beach in Thailand from April 11th to the 19th. The Chao Phraya River is the heart of Thailand's capital city. Commerce is conducted there, as well as simpler pleasures. ASEAN Today's Nongo Dharapati is our guide. This boat is an essential part of Bangkok's public transportation system. It serves most tourist spots along the vital waterway. Private tours start at 800 baht or $26 an hour. The landmarks along the river soon give way to old wooden houses and temples along a labyrinth of connecting canals. One is called Klong Bang Luang, built in 1552. Houses along the six-kilometer passage were well known for housing the best goldsmiths in the city. Uh, the first time I arrived in Thailand, I saw this, uh, this river, and you really feel it's, uh, the people live with the river. They are on the river, they build the houses on the river, they have the markets on the river. I use the river every day. On, uh, they have these small charter boats, you know, like you can use as a taxi, very useful. One house was recently turned into a gallery called the Artist's House. Chumpan Akapantanon is the art professor and photographer who turned the two-story structure into a space to preserve and promote several forms of traditional Thai art. The highlight is a free daily puppet show. This is Nopadol Hong Si Sakul began performing in puppet shows 12 years ago. Each performance begins with a ceremony to thank the teachers and the founder of this traditional Thai art form. The show is usually based on well-known Indian mythologies. Unlike many traditional performances, shows at the artist's house are adapted to please modern audiences. ความใกล้ชิดความที่ได้เข้าถึงลักษณะวัฒนธรรมที่ใกล้ชิดจริงๆเพราะว่าอย่างสมมุติอย่างที่อื่นเนี่ยเวลาที่เราจะดูลักษ
very educational. I love history and good news. We're trying to cover our bases, Linda. And Hendy had this to say. I just watched ASEAN today and it brought some interesting news from ASEAN and even the world. Thank you for that comment, Hendy. Let us know what you're thinking. Please email us at aseantoday.tv at gmail.com. Post something on our Facebook page or tweet us at, at aseantodaytv. And that's it for this month, Dalton. All right, Dee, thank you very much. Anything else going on we should know about? Well, Dalton, we're already preparing, of course, for the ASEAN Summit to take place in Naputal in May. So All look right. out for that. Yes, looking forward to that. Raymond. Dalton and Dee, one more ASEAN story to tell. Filmmakers in Cambodia are now employing aerial technology to help them in movie production. Unmanned flying vehicles, drones, are being used to capture scenes cheaply while looking like a Hollywood production. Live events such as concerts are examples where drones mounted with cameras have become particularly useful and producers say commercial drone technology continues to improve. With prices falling, moviegoers can expect more from above. And that's ASEAN Today for this month. I'm Raymond Goh of Malaysia's TV Tiga in Kuala Lumpur. And I'm Dalton Tanonaka of the Indonesia Channel in Jakarta. Thank you for watching and please join us again next month.